Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how I ended up as an engineer. I'll go over how I decided on engineering, what university was like, how I chose my master's degree, and what it was like getting my first job. It's 11th grade. I have no idea what to do with my life, but I do know what I won't be. An athlete? not a salesperson, or a doctor. So what does that leave? Maybe I do accounting, a job with more numbers than people. Then one day in AP Calculus, everything changed. We had a really interesting substitute teacher. Today we'll be doing Calculus. Gross. you're all going to be engineers, huh? An engineer? Why would I use calculus to drive a train? Huh? You may not believe me, but until then, I actually had no idea what an engineer was. So I started googling the different types of engineer. I saw electrical, chemical, mechanical, mining, and civil. Suddenly, I had a new goal in life, to be a structural engineer. For some reason, my parents didn't seem surprised. It's like they'd seen signs when I was growing up, like bad TV taste, math contests, and solo Jenga games. Anyway, next I had to figure out how to become an engineer. At first, I wanted to go to a U.S. school, but I decided not to for three reasons. It was too expensive, I didn't want to take the SATs, and I'm neither a LeBron nor an Einstein, so scholarships were out. I decided to stay in Canada. I picked a few schools to apply to, took all my prereq courses, and wrote all my applications. I got in. Then the challenge of university started to actually sink in. In Canada, year one is typically general engineering. Then based on year one, you apply for your discipline in year two. In years three to five, you start branching off into your specialty. You may be wondering why it says five years. In Canada, it's pretty common to take five years for an engineering undergrad. That's because you could do co-op or work terms, you could do a minor, or you could just not do a full course load to try and keep your sanity. My undergrad looked a little different. In high school, I did AP classes, and I decided to accept credit for these courses to avoid paying for them at university. In retrospect, I wish I just paid. You may have picked up that I did AP Calculus in grade 11, which means that I didn't do any math in grade 12. Then in university, I started with Calc 3, which I almost failed. Anyway, I had too many credits for general engineering, so I chose civil right away. I also only worked during the summers, and I didn't do a minor. So I finished in four years. Now let's go on a tangent. I went to school because I wanted to be a structural engineer. But while you're there, you learn so many cool other things. I really enjoyed the other areas of civil engineering. So when it came time to choose, I didn't know what to do. Structural was still my favorite, but I thought it would be the most difficult. My first couple years at university were a struggle, which now I know is normal, but it left me shook. What I needed was confidence. Instead, some guy told me he thought structural was too hard for me. That didn't give me confidence, but it did make me mad. And that's how my L. Woods era began. I 
graduated with my structural classes. Then I had another decision to make. I wanted to get a master's degree, but for what future? Should I switch to finance to make some money? Should I do an MEng or an MSc? The finance programs were really expensive. An MEng only takes a year, but it was also expensive. An MSc, though, it came with funding. It's basically the same as an MEng, but with an extra year because you have to write a thesis. If I got an MSc, I wouldn't have to get any loans, which meant it was basically free. So I got my MSc. Then I had to find a job. Before we get into that, let's summarize how I even got here. In high school, a teacher used engineer as an insult, which made me curious. Then in university, some boy told me structural was too hard for me, so I chose structural. Then I was too cheap to pay for a finance degree, so I got a master's in structural engineering. I'm only kind of joking. I've always loved structural engineering, but I wasn't always confident enough to pursue it. So instead, I tricked myself. If I told myself I was only doing an MSc because I couldn't afford a finance degree, then if I failed, I wouldn't feel so bad. It's maybe not the best mindset, but it worked out. When I finished my MSc, I didn't have any money and I didn't have a job. So I did what any self-respecting millennial with a master's degree does. I moved back into my parents' basement. Did I get a part-time job? No. Did I help pay rent? Also no. But did I play a lot of Pokemon Go? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Also spend time job hunting, but I wasn't off to a very good start. In school, I didn't spend time networking, and I didn't do any structural co-op terms. I also wasn't even familiar with structural engineering companies. Some things I could have done better would be prioritizing networking while I was still in school, tried calling companies even if they weren't hiring. Sometimes HR can give you tips about what they look for, so even if they aren't hiring, you can get insight into what to put on your resume for other jobs. I also should have done more research on the companies I was applying for. I did do a couple things right. Like, I applied for a lot of jobs. There's power in numbers. And I kept working on my skills. I downloaded trial versions of software, did the tutorials, and reviewed my school notes. Eventually, I got an interview, which I tanked. But then I got another interview, and that one went better. Then that company had me write a test, which I think is pretty typical. There were some things on English, basic engineering principles, and a personality profile. Thankfully, there were no red flags, and they hired me. And that is how I became an engineer. And my parents got their basement back.